kili strestrum, dorelis trahum, quam marilis trogo sheko, aungua heli tae le onsen tremarez, miton binginao compare lekis tro relis traro cau comandare, che aleca ele drahalilaro coloaract. <coughs> feeling like prophesying it's been a while there's a portal it seems like there's been an open door it's been standing open <laughs> and sometimes your mama goes why'd you leave the refrigerator door open <laughs> the lights on in the refrigerator look at all that goodness in there oh my goodness the refrigerator door has been standing open i don't know how long but the light's been on why have we been bypassing this provision God says, exercise your senses. It's written. It's written right there in the Bible. Exercise your senses. There is so many dimensions and facets of satisfaction that we are absolutely free to step into into and walk in. And this, this portal, I've walked in this before. I feel like there's an activation going on just by speaking this and by acknowledging it and by bringing your witness on board along with what I'm seeing. To him who has eyes to see. Years ago, though, I remembered um, being awakened to the angelic, being awakened to provision, being awakened to ministering spirits. And I had been meditating in um, the first nine chapters of the book of Proverbs is basically admonishments to a fa- from a father to his son. And there's, there's a lot of whack. Oh my goodness, the first nine chapters of Proverbs, is a lot of whack on that. And so I was meditating on the whack. And I, I there's a tangibility that came upon me. I was re- making recitations and I was meditating and I was reciting and uh, I kept coming back to things tangibility there's a tangibility going on I was like lord what's this prudence and you you know the constructs of creation are upheld by the administration of angels did you know that i mean i think that's in the book of hebrews and he, he's founded so many things on his word and so it shouldn't be any surprise when you're really getting into the bible into the spirit of the Bible and not the letter of the word, the, the, the letter of the law. Because th- there's a tangibility going on here. When you, when you get into the spirit, there, there's a tangibility. And, and all this stuff in the natural realm becomes kind of vaporous. Because I ran into something tangible. Prudence. And it was the first instance that I had, oh my gosh, this is an angel. And that just unfolded. Um, a period of a whole lot of supernatural activity about 10 years ago. And, um, and there, there are several, several instances and several entities and I could recount times and I could recount uh, activity and I could recount seeing things in the natural and in the supernatural. But, but there was a point that I got to and I realized that in my, my foolishness, I think I... I deactivated it. I mean, the, the, God desire, desires for us to walk in this stuff, and there's a deactivation that comes along somewhere along the line when we consent to something or when we don't consent to something. And um, and I remember there there was a that the, one of these instances of tangibility that came upon me as I was paging through Proverbs and meditating on Proverbs, modesty. And can I can I just tell you that? God really yearns to gather us as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings. There is a covering. There is a secret place of the Most High. There is a shadow of the Almighty. There is a layering. There's a place in one of the minor prophets that talks about he has built his layers in heaven. He has built up stories in heaven. And there is a layering of glory. There's a foundation of the city where you abide, the new Jerusalem, that that every layer is a precious gem. 
and there is just a comfort and there is a, 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 something just absolutely exquisite that God desires to cover us with as we bear all, as we approach him in childlikeness and vulnerability. And uh, 10 years ago, I mean, that I stumbled upon that word. There's no condemnation in it, but I, you know, I deactivated something. I know I did. I just, it's clear to me today. I deactivated something. Today, I'm turning it back on, like the refrigerator light. Because I was, I'm, I, you, you all know that I'm into uh, fitness. I like to look good. God likes me to look good. Um, and, and, the attention you get from, from looking good and carrying yourself with confidence, there's a pleasure in that, you know? Somewhere along the lines, I, I'm just confessing this. I'm just owning this and throwing it out there that, that, that I was interested in attention. And, and the, the Bible says, set your, things on thing, set your heart on things that are in heaven and not on the things that are on the earth. And my affections were skewed. And I turned this, this thing off because I resisted the ministration of modesty. It's an angelic uh, service. There is, there is, there is a bored angel <laughs> named Modesty that I have needed to walk in agreement with, and it has been activated because my affections have been skewed. And I'm just setting some things right, right here. Modesty, I welcome your service. I welcome your ministry. Whatever God and Jesus Christ has proclaimed and decreed that you bring to my life, I just welcome that, and I embrace it in Jesus Christ's name. And I'm just thinking about the, the, the place that these tangible beings have in, in our lives, in your life, the things that need, could be activated in your life. Uh, let's not make them bored. Because the, the things that we hold to, I mean, compared to the realm that we walk in, the inheritance in the kingdom of heaven that belongs to us, all this stuff that we set our affections on is just vaporous. And and I, and I think of the place in the book of Enoch where um, the, the role and the function of angels uh, was kind of clarified because there's, there's the watchers in the book of Enoch and they were angels that are basically out of favor with God, unfortunately. And uh, they got rebuked because these angels in the book of Enoch wanted Enoch, the prophet, to intercede in the courts of the Most High on their behalf so they could get back into good graces with the Lord. And they got rebuked by the Lord. They said, he said, you were created. Your function is to minister to men. And you sent this man, Enoch, to me for him to minister to me on your behalf. You've got it backwards, babies. They got rebuked. And, and, and that's just a clarification for us that these beings recognize the image of the Most High. On us. I don't care how ascended you are. I don't care how fundamental you are. I don't care how spiritual you think that you may or may not be. Because these things are here for our ministry. And I, I think there's a lot of people that want to aspire to get to that level. To, 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 I mean, the, the book of Colossians talks about beware of the worship or the over-adulation uh, uh, of angels. And uh, it's just a wide-open, spaced opportunity that we have to enter in and to start walking in some whack and embracing it. <sighs> Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we give you glory, Lord. We thank you for the innumerable company of angels. We thank you that we have come to Mount Zion. We've come to the hill of the Most High. And you are the Most High God. And the imprint of your beloved Son, the conformability of your beloved Son is on us. And Lord, we want to see the Son of Man. We want to see like Jacob saw in a dream when the Son of Man was lifted up from the earth and the angels were, angels were ascending and descending upon him. And we're not ascending into an angel. We're being conformed to the image of the Son. We're not, we're not becoming conscious of something out in the by and by. We're, we're, we're welcoming the ministry of the kingdom of heaven coming to earth.
And we reckon you're soon coming, Jesus. We reckon that you will appear in glory with a myriad upon myriads, the 10,000 upon 10,000 of your holy ones, the sons of light coming to make war and to overcome darkness upon the earth. Oh, God, that we could walk in that. Oh, God, that we could mount up on a horse like you're going to come literally on a horse, not metaphorically, a real horse. What is our horse? What is the name? God, give us, Lord God, what liberty, Lord, that there is in the kingdom according to your pleasure and favor, to name that horse. What is your horse? What's your horse? What's the name of your horse? Name your horse! Get ready. Mount up. Because greater are those that are with you than any that could stand against you. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Bless you, babies. I love you a whole lot.